finalisation of the Armenian question in 1878, you know, do, do, to what to what extent, I think you're asking is, you know, do the, do the Ottoman elite genuinely think that the Armenians now compromise, com comprise a, 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 a threat somehow to Ottoman territorial integrity? Well, yes, yes, they, yes, they do. I mean, it's, I think it's very important in getting into the minds of people who commit crimes that they actually genuinely believe they have a reason to. Who caused that international level of... Uh, you know? Well, I, I, this again is what, I mean, the, the Armenians here, if we're looking at, you know, the, what the deeper cause of this, you know, the Armenians fall victim to a dynamic that really is not started by them. You know, has very little to do with them until late in the century. This it's, is a dynamic which is firstly about all Christians in the Ottoman Empire. You know, which is a way about, you know, the 1839 and 1856, the famous Tanzimat reform decrees. You know, particularly 1856, that's heavily pushed by Britain because the idea is that, you know, the Ottoman Empire has lost Greece, it's lost Serbia. It's obviously kind of weak because of its multinationality. And if you want the Ottoman Empire to be strong, as a, as, a, as a kind of bulwark against Russia in particular, but also so you don't create all the problems of the Ottoman Empire falling apart, then the Ottomans need to do something towards their minorities. They need to offer a, a you know, so the, the kind of the, the, the moves towards equality of the mid 19th century are, you know, partly at British suggestion, but partly coming from the Ottoman elite itself, are moves towards offering something to the Christians um, to tie their future in with the Ottoman Empire. They're not pro-Christian reforms because the Ottomans want to be nice to Christians. They're kind of pragmatic measures to mean that, you know, the empire will become a stronger, more cohesive unit and these people won't want to secede. And because secession is becoming the pattern, and particularly in the Balkans. Now, the funny thing is, you know, this is a time which the Armenians are still known as, the, you know, the loyal community, the loyal millet. And, you know, they're, they're, they develop nationalist separatist aspirations late, and generally as a result, in the sense of many of the experiences they They've undergone in the, in the late Ottoman Empire. So, you know, the Armenians really are falling into this thing, a dynamic which has been created by other people for other reasons. You know, it's only, and this is why I stress the internationalization of the Armenian question in 1878, because Christians generally mentioned in the reform treaty before, but internet, the Armenians specifically being singled out, this, you know, this is a real kind of sign to you. So, Turkey views that as Yeah. Uh, <coughs> question has to do with the motives of the Jews in the Turkish government. One of the one of the motives I read about some time ago about some of the historians is that Turkey, because they were being geographically blockaded by the Allied powers, saw saw uh, they, they, they wanted to, they wanted to know how they could expand their, their territory. And, and one theory was they could go through Turkey to get to the Middle East. What's your opinion about that? The question is, is, is to what extent um, Germany's relationships with the Ottoman Empire, friendly relations, whereas some of the relations forced up, are, are conditioned by a desire to uh, expand in the Middle East in a way that they couldn't expand in Europe because of the, the, the arrangement of states in Europe. It's a good question. I think the, the main driving force behind, America, behind German relations with the Ottoman Empire is, is an economic one. Uh, it's resource and market related, it's prestige related too, um, you know, and, 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 it's, and it's, uh, you know, it's clearly to do with also with diplomatic influence. Behind that, however, is an assumption that, you know, the Ottoman Empire probably will fall apart at some point. You know, temporarily, Germany actually, between, between Britain stopping, you know, being supporter of the Ottoman Empire in the 19th century and then becoming again so after the First World War, you know, Germany is, is, is the main supporter of Ottoman territorial integrity for a while, but it's, I think it's predicated upon the assumption the Ottoman Empire will fall apart eventually, and if it does, and if and when it does, Germany is well placed to make sure it can, you know, get what it, what it wants. But, but for the, in the first instance, its interests are, let's say, they're definitely geostrategic, but they're not territorial. Back oil. Um, that, that too? Although, of course, you know, Baku at that time was, yeah, yeah, like the Russian, yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's there, yeah. All the way in the back. Yes. First, I want to thank you for a very important question. Oh, you The second is, my question is going back to what you mentioned earlier. Somebody asked if there was anything Armenians could have done to prevent this genocide. You basically have a certain explanation, brief explanation, uh, sort of going to, to the point to say that there was really not much. Because they were basically a victim of uh, the circumstances 
instigated or initiated by political powers of the day, from 1850s on all. And my question is somewhat of a theoretical or of wishful thinking is too late. Uh, but if Armenians have the political foresight or the command somehow, I know they were not politically uh, powerful, they never were, but if they have, in your opinion, if they could tell the European powers or the great powers to butt off, not to mend not, not to not to interfere in their affairs or to speak on their behalf, if Armenians did that, in, in your honest opinion, would the genocide would, would, would the genocide have to happen? hadn't bought it up, I think the chances would be greatly reduced. Okay. Yeah. Since, uh, since then, my question to you, sir, is since the great powers, going back, since the great powers brought this issue of reform to the Ottoman Empire, wouldn't you yourself put some blame on Great Britain, uh, Germany, and Russia collectively as the, as the first instigators of what would become downwards 70 years down the road or 65 years down the road as the ultimate tragedy. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, you mentioned that you don't see intentionally Germany or England, they were they were paying for their own interest at the given time, etc. etc. I maybe misunderstood you. I was hoping to hear that basically Armenians on their own, if there were no great powers, maybe then maybe they wouldn't be under the Ottoman or Turkish rule today, which, which they are, a small portion of it. Maybe Armenian tragedy would not have happened. So uh, we took your support to pay powers for, for, for indirect being responsible. What's what, anyway. let, let, let's think for a moment about Britain. I mean, the thing is, what, what's going on? What's going on with Britain's British sponsorship of, of reforms in the 19th century is this: they're trying to keep the Ottoman Empire together. They keep it, you know, and. You know, I'm making no moral judgments about whether the Ottoman Empire should have stayed together or shouldn't have stayed together, but I think this is, this is how it actually happened. The British wanted to keep the Ottoman Empire together, so they support it to a certain extent militarily, you know, that's what the Crimean War is partly about. They support it financially, they support it diplomatically. Um, as a part of that process of keeping together, they established this strange dual faceted relationship with the, with the Ottoman Christian, particularly the Armenians. So, in keeping, while keeping the empire together and to a certain extent strengthening it, they're also at the same time, you know, creating tensions which they don't want to create, but inevitably do create between the Ottoman Empire and its Christian minorities. And because they, yeah, unintentionally, yeah, unintentionally, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, yeah. They, they, I mean, the British want harmony. Yeah, the British want everyone, all the Ottoman peoples, to be wonderfully happy together. But of course, the logic of what they end up doing. You know, is is creates precisely the opposite, and and it's because of you know because of that and because the Ottoman Empire is almost artificially being kept together, you know, and, and kept artificially stronger than it might otherwise be, you know, the parts of it that might naturally have fallen off the edges, you know, are, are being kept together and then you know being made object of the suspicion which the elite itself to to maintain its you know its you know itself as it has been maintained. Then wishes to destroy. So you know you're, you're in a situation where you know the British are uh, you know trying to have it both ways, and, and and the end result, of course, is you know is is is, is massive murder. Sir, sir, I, I thank you very much. My question was. I got my. Yeah, 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 yeah.